all teed up. And here comes the boot, and it's a spinning kick. It's fielded by an up man at the 33 to the 35 to the 40. High formation on second and six. It's given to Ricks, and he finds a hole up the middle and then is smacked down hard at midfield, just shy of the first down. Carter comes to the right side. Vince Bean goes left out of the eye. It is given again to Rice up the middle, but not far this time. He's to the 38-yard line, and he was knocked over there. As Smith lines him up in the eye again, Bean left, Carter right, play action pass. Smith looking downfield, throwing it for Bean, and it is caught, but out of bounds. To field this punt from Bracken, and he lifts it high. Wilbur signals for a fair catch, goes to his knees, and makes the grab down on about the 13-yard line, and that's where the Hoosiers will have it for the first time in this ball game. With 12-12 remaining in the first quarter, there is no score. Pick up on that last swing pass out to Brown makes it second down and three. The Hoosiers, like the Wolverines, operating out of the eye formation. Laufenberg, play action pass, throws it, caught at the 25-yard line by tight end Chris Cook. He's hit immediately by Paul Giergash, but that will give the Hoosiers a first down, their first to the ball game. Michigan rates number eight among Big Ten teams in pass defense coming into this ball game as Laufenberg will give it off to Brown, and he is going to be hit. For a loss back at the 20-yard line by the sophomore Kevin Brooks. Check out this Michigan defense for you. As we get a moment as Laufenberg dripping back to pass. Stays in the pocket. Now he runs out of it. Throws it back upfield. It's incomplete. He threw it over the head of John Boyd. Standing at about the 25-yard line. They chip. Deergash and Bourne, the inside linebackers. Bostic strong safety. Cooper free safety. Here's a draw given off to Walsh. He busts his way over the right side, but... Hauled down at about the 28-yard line. Good centers. Big Ten candidates playing in this ballgame. Jeff Weibel of the Hoosiers. Dixon for Michigan. The handoff goes to Ricks trying to run a slant off the right side close to the 38-yard line. And the handoff to Ricks. Finds some hole up the middle as he cuts back to the inside. Stays on his feet into Indiana territory at the 47-yard line. That's a first down for the Michigan. Lawrence Ricks in five carries, 23 yards. Averaging just under five yards per carry on the season. He's over 300 yards on the year, and he has the ball again, going to the short side. Tried to tightrope down the near sideline. Finally stepped out at the 41-yard line. By the middle guard, Denver Smith. Indiana's pretty well cornered the market in Smith's. They have Denver Smith and Mark Smith on the defensive front three. They have Doug Smith as their kicker, and they have Terry Smith as their number two flanker behind Dwayne Gunn. They go to Rice. He tries a little bit of a counter up the middle and nowhere to go as he is knocked down right about the line of scrimmage at the 34. We've got Rick Rogers into the game now as a tailback lined up behind Rice in the eye. Bean right, Carter left, Smith gives it off to Rogers on the delay and he has only a couple to the 37-yard line. Third down and nine, they split the setbacks. And Smith back to throw for the first time. Rifles one up here and is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Tim Wilbur. Just in his career as he sends one up in that direction. Looking good. It is through. <laughs> Timeout on the field. 6-18 remaining in this first quarter. The score, Michigan 3, Indiana. Guard off the Michigan record. And he sends this kickoff spinning into the end zone. There will be no run back as it's off the hands. Of gun. Six minutes remaining in this first quarter. The setbacks are split behind Babe Laufenberg. Taking a long time at that line of scrimmage. Back to throw. Fires a sideliner. Far side and it is caught by Johnny Boyd. Hit by Burgai immediately. Bumped him out of bounds. Again, the setbacks are split. And again, Laufenberg will throw. He's being chased back there. Here's a screen set up to Brown at the 30. Comes to the 35. Hit from behind and dropped close to the 39-yard line. He sets him up in the eye formation on second and short, gives it to his tailback Orlando Brown, and he pushes his way up close to a first down from here. It looks like he has it. Off about five to the left. Out of the eye formation, Laufenberg turns and gives it off to Brown. He's going to the short side, finds some room at the 45, and finally is knocked down. Jump. And here we are with second and one. Left, Laufenberg to throw, arches one down here for Gunn, and it is incomplete as Gunn and Evan Cooper were going step for step. Both went down, both looked at the official, possibly expecting a flag, but there was none forthcoming. One, and they'll go this time with the tailback, and he goes for a first down, close to the 47-yard line. Side, and here is the ball given off to the fullback, Jack Walsh, and Walsh carrying the ball straight up the middle down to the 41-yard line. Pick up on that one. And they'll put it at the 41. This drive originated back at the 20 of Indiana. 
Out of the eye formation, Laufenberg gives it. No, it's fumbled, and the Michigan man on it. He tried to give it off to his tailback, Bobby Howard. He never got it, and Kevin Brooks saw the loose ball and immediately dropped on it, and Michigan has the football, and that is the first fumble that Indiana has lost in the 1982 season. For the Wolverines, the pitch back comes to Ricks. Behind Rice in the I formation, gets the handoff again from Smith, cuts back into the middle, and he's into Indiana territory inside the 49-yard line. Be illegal use of hands or holding, one of the two. And instead of the game by Ricks, it is marched off back to the 38-yard line. Oh, Mark from the spot of the foul, and here is Smith back to throw. He hits Dunaway at the 45, and Dunaway is knocked out of bounds. Smith was hit by Kevin King just as he released the football, but he did complete it to Dunaway, and Dunaway was run out right at midfield, the 50-yard line by Jimmy Hunter, still short of a first down. Third down and short. Michigan again with two tight ends on that line of scrimmage and a third in motion in Caddis. And they give it off to Rogers. Big hole up the middle, and Rogers has a first down to the 42 of Indiana. 50-yard field goal by Ali Haji Sheik. They have it first and 10 at the Hoosier 42-yard line. Pull back, and he doesn't go anywhere as he is smacked down right about the line of scrimmage. And he's set up off the right side as the split man and Bean is flanked left. And here is Smith on a bootleg running right side. He is firing it, and it is caught again by Dunaway down at the 25-yard line. Hit immediately for Michigan. Up the 25 of Indiana. Smith jams it off to Ricks up the middle. He's tripped up for uh, Rogers, and he almost broke that one uh, for lengthy distance had not he lost his balance. But Mark Weiler got him around the ankles. Jump. Carter remains on the sidelines as it's again working out of the eye, and this time it goes to the fullback freshman Dan Rice, and he bangs his way down inside the 16-yard line. Stadium, Michigan again driving after one quarter of play. Michigan leads it three to nothing. We'll be back. Might have called one of those a week or so ago, but <laughs> today I'd still call that play. Okay, AC coming wide to the left side. Again, three tight ends with Caddis. I'd love to throw against this defense, slot. though. Smith is throwing. He's looking for Carter. The ball is batted in the air and it is caught and intercepted by Tom Hendrickson of the Hoosiers. Didn't make any difference because it was going to be Indiana's football anyway. So the Hoosiers take over. First and 10 at their 17-yard line. Here's Laufenberg to throw after play action. Fires it. Caught at the 30-yard line. That's Dwayne Gunn. 12 out of 13 a year ago against Purdue of his first 13 set a record here he is to throw again scrambling around fires it up the middle and it is caught by the tight end Chris Cook he is hit at the 32 immediately so that's only going to be about a yard gain on the play this time they have the shotgun and out of the shotgun it is given off to Jack Walsh up the middle and he has a first down at the 45 yard line. Offenberg awaiting the direct snap from the center. Jeff Weibel has it. Back to pass he goes. Throws it off to the left side. And it is caught at the 50-yard line by tight end Scott McNabb. He is tackled and dropped at the 42 by John Lott. And Indiana is in Michigan territory. Michigan first and 10 for the Hoosiers. Gun right. Boyd left. Out of the eye. Loffenberg fakes. Back to throw it. He hits Minio. And he is spun around and dropped right at the line of scrimmage on that little swing coming out of the backfield by Tom Hassel. Second quarter. The Hoosiers out of the shotgun once again. Laufenberg throwing for gun down the near sideline, and it is incomplete as John Lott got a hand on it to bat it away from gun down inside the 10. Gun, who also checks in at an even six feet, so it was an even fight all the way for Dwayne Gunn. It's third down and 10. Laufenberg gives it off to Minio, trying it left side, and oh, he is hit in midair by Paul Geargash at the 39-yard line. Evan Cooper standing back at the Michigan 10. This is a high kick, but it's a short one, and it's going to sail out of bounds at the 14 of Michigan. Rick Rogers at the tailback spot behind Rice. They're on the eye behind Smith, and Smith gives it off to Rogers, looking for some running room off the right side, and he is splattered up at about the 21-yard line. Three after that seven-yard gallop by Rogers. Indiana middle guard Denver Smith moved. And apparently he did not get back in time as flags were thrown. They're going to first down. 
as the ball is walked up to the 26-yard line, and Smith on the delay goes to Rodgers around the right side. He's hit from behind and dropped up at about the 30-yard line by Mark Smith. The last series, Steve Johnson split to the right. On the delay again to Rodgers, started left, cut back up the middle, not much there as he smacked down short of the 33-yard line. And short, Smith bootlegging to the left. He's going to run with the football to the 35, to the 40, knocked off stride, and finally goes down at the 47-yard line. Well, Caldwell on the tackle. First down for Michigan. So it's a first and 10 for Michigan at the 47 of the Wolverines to Rodgers. Up the middle, a big hole. He's into the secondary, and he has finally dropped at the Indiana 37-yard line. Down for the Wolverines, and we have... Michigan player slowly getting to his feet. Is that Rodgers? It is. As he is right now standing, uh, being attended to, Lawrence Ricks will come into the Michigan backfield as the trainers trying to assist him off the field. Rodgers doesn't want to go. Now he's being assisted from the field. They're looking at Rick Rodgers on the near side. Here we go, first and 10. Uh, Smith on the option, keeps it, rolls over the line of scrimmage, 30, 25. Had some running room to the 20, the 15. He has one man to beat. He's around him at the five, and he goes in for the touchdown. A superlative bit of running by Steve Smith. because of injury it's a high kick that will sail well into the end zone will be fielded by Howard and down and Indiana will have to put it in play at the 20. Gun comes to the right side Boyd goes left for the Hoosiers working out of the eye formation. Here's Laufenberg back to throw he's going to be hit and dropped for a loss back at the 11 yard line by Winford Carraway. Back defense in there and they won't have to worry about it this time as the ball is given off to John Midia running the short side. He was knocked out of bounds by Jerry Burgay at the 13-yard line, and he just kept running. Evan Brooks is up to his feet, but it does not look as though he is going to be able to put any weight at all on that left leg as... He is led to the sideline. And back to pass he goes. Fires it down the middle and it is juggled and caught at the 40 yard line by the tight end Chris Cook. He juggled that ball for about five yards as he was sailing to the turf. Gun off to the left side out of the shotgun. Laufenberg being chased back in the backfield. Runs out of it and stumbles and falls all by himself back at the 36 yard line. Filling in for Kevin Brooks. On second and long. From the I formation this time. Laufenberg gives it off to his tailback and Minio is up to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Now it's Bobby Howard working out of the tailback spot as Lee Corso continues to alternate his tailbacks among three. Here's Laufenberg to throw. Fires one again up the middle, and it is incomplete intended for Gunn at the 45. Paul Geargash got a hand on that football. He did. This is kind of a wobbly kick. Cooper comes up to field it at the 30, goes to the 35, and he runs helmet to helmet into an Indiana tackler at the 38-yard line. Guy once again, and he'll throw on first down. A little play action. No, he gave it to Rogers, and Rogers is to the 40-yard line. Well, he had us befuddled on that one, as that's uh, about a yard to pick up to the 40 for Rodgers. But may play later. Second down. 
And about eight for the Wolverines, and this time it is given to Ricks out of the tailback spot. He runs it up to the 41-yard line. Overall, Michigan's deaded them for 10 points so far in this ball game. Out, out of a split setback formation, and here is Smith to throw on third and long. Now he's scrambling out of the pocket. He is trips and falls up at the 43. Managed to get away from a Hoosier tackler, but couldn't regain his balance. Thus, Michigan will give the ball back to Indiana. Called a punt only once before in this ball game. He'll be kicking away to Tim Wilbur. Snap lifts a high, high spiral that will sail well into the end zone. And out, Indiana will put it in play at the 20. The Michigan Football Network. Uh, Walsh, the fullback. The tailback is Minio, and they go with Walsh up the middle, and he has maybe three to the 23 yard line. Tackle made by Keith Bostick. It's now this first half. Laufenberg gives it to his fullback again. He finds some running room off the right side, and he cranks it up to the 31-yard line. That'll be a first down. Mike Boren on the tackle for Michigan. Laufenberg up under center. He's going to throw on first down. Arches a long one up here for Boyd, and it is intercepted by John Watt on a tremendous catch down at the 26 of Michigan. Just an all-out effort by Lott on the swan dive. He reached out with both hands and pulled that pass in. He was by far the closest one to the ball. And Laufenberg, again, he threw it a long way, but the receiver couldn't quite catch up to it. Lott playing in excellent position, had his man covered, kept the receiver between the sidelines and the quarterback and himself, and had him covered from all sides, and he comes away with the football. Out of Massary, Ohio to the left side he is going to run with the football he's heading for the sideline and goes out at the 28 the giving it off on the delay to Ricks he's coming down the near sideline and he is bounced out of bounds at the 40 yard line that's a first down for Michigan on the draw gives it to Ricks and he is going to be hit for a loss at the 39 crowd in the I didn't either because it looked terrible Denver. all day now he's going to have to tuck the football and run. Comes to the 40, and he goes down at the 42-yard line, and that'll be the end of the first half. The crowd reaction would not give you that indication. So after one half of play here at Michigan Stadium, a 10-point lead for the Wolverines. We'll be back with a special halftime guest of Tom Slade's in just a moment. <laughs> First and 10 at the Hoosier 20. Jeff Weibel's their center. The guards are Jim Sakonich and Mark Filburn. The tackles Kevin Allen and Mark Rodriguez. Tailback for it is going to be John Minio as Orlando Brown remains on the sideline with that hip pointer. Jack. Long time at that line of scrimmage for Laufenberg. And on first down, he'll throw. Fires it up here near sideline. Broken up and almost intercepted by Keith Bostick. That is right now. Thompson and Rose, the outside linebackers, they give it to Minio on a sweep around the left side, puts his head down and pulls his way up over the 28-yard line for an eight-yard gain. Third down and a long two for the Hoosiers on play-action pass. Laufenberg fires it, and it is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Scott McNabb. And turning in some pretty good coverage on that one was the linebacker, Robert Thompson. And I tell you, Laufenberg was level just as he threw that football. Evan Cooper waiting for it. It's a shorter kick. Fair catch signaled by Cooper. He'll catch it at the 39. Michigan will have it. Wolverine just shy of their 40 on first down. Smith goes to his tailback. Rick's trying the short side on a sweep, and he's got some yardage before he is knocked out of bounds close to the first down marker at the 49-yard line. There. Second at inches, and the ball is given off to the fullback, Rice, and he has a first down and then a pile to boot as he just pulled his way up the middle down inside the Indiana 39-yard line. Jimmy Hunter finally necktied him down there. Side and it is complete to the 25-yard line. That's Craig Dunaway. This time they go up the middle with it with Rice down to the 21-yard line. 
Smith will give it off to his tailback. Ricks finds a hole up the middle, and he is stiffened at the 12-yard line as he put an Indiana player to the turf, and he has not gotten up. Bean is left, Johnson right. Out of the eye, Smith sprinting to the left side, trying to get some running room, spun around, and he's going to be hit for a loss back at the 15. And as a result, it's a loss back close to the 15-yard line, second and 12. Smith back to throw after play action. Looks into the end zone, fires it, and it is up in the air for grabs and incomplete. Oh, two Hoosiers had a hand on the football after it spun away from Steve Johnson. And none of them could come down with it. He has run out of bounds, but not before he is down inside the two-yard line. And that is the jet. And I don't know what they call it nowadays. They probably have to call it an SST, or I don't know, something beyond a jet. Not as simple anymore. But Steve Smith with that speed and the great block that he got from Lawrence Ricks at the corner. They do that. Steve Smith has everything he could possibly want out there. Smith gives him a first and goal at the two. And here is Smith giving it to Ricks. He is tripped up at the line of scrimmage, manages to fall down close to the one-yard line. The ball is given to Rice. He hurdles his way up and over. Touchdown, Michigan. Freshman Danny Rice is first TD in a Michigan uniform. I think he's really going to like this now after he gets used to this kind of thing. Catapulted into the end zone just. Give Michigan a 16 to nothing lead. Ali Haji Sheik will try to improve on that as he's booted it up and through. 44 straight for Ali Haji Sheik. And we have a timeout on the field. 10.54 remaining in this third quarter. The score, Michigan, 17, Indiana, nothing. Well, Indiana going to work for the second time on offense now. They didn't do much with it the first time they had it as Ali Haji Sheik. With this slight zephyr to his back right now, boots it well into the end zone. There will be no run back. Clemson 14, Kentucky nothing. Clemson leading Kentucky now 14 to nothing at half time. Center now from that quarterback spot. And the ball is given off to Minio, a big hole up the middle. He fumbles, and Michigan has it at the 29-yard line. Keith Bostic recovering the fumble. Minio had a lot of yardage as he was up close to the 30 before he was popped on a tremendous shoulder tackle. By Vince Bean comes to the left side. Johnson goes right, and Smith will throw. Fires it, it is. Batted down by big number 79, Steve Mormon. Third down and eight. S setbacks are split. Smith will throw. Gets some time in the pocket. Now runs out of the pocket, and he is dragged down. He got back to the line of scrimmage by Steve Mormon. So Mr. Mormon has figured prominently in the last two plays. Almost a nine iron for Sheik, only about 44 yards. He has a 50-yarder earlier in the game. Hewlett kneeling at the 34-yard line from the far side hash marks. And she puts a foot into it. It's drifting. It is up. No good. It is not good. The we'll operate out of the shotgun now on first and 10. Here comes the rush on Laufenberg. He throws it up for Howard. It's off his hands and incomplete. To the I-4 or the setback split formation go the Hoosiers. As on the draw, it's given off to Walsh, and he is hit from behind by Robert Thompson. Carried him up for maybe a couple to the 44-yard line. They have not threatened so far in this ballgame. Out of the eye, Laufenberg fakes to his up man, gives it to his tailback. Minio squirms away from a couple of tacklers, but finally dragged down up over the 46-yard line. Out of this shotgun. Laufenberg takes the direct snap, drifts back to throw, scrambling around, can't find anybody free, runs into his own man, and finally is dragged down at the 44, the line of scrimmage by Al Cincy. 
Evan Cooper standing back near the 20. He lifts a high, high, booming kick. Again, not too long, and Cooper hung with it and came up with a football. He caught it at the 30 and kind of tripped and fell forward. He is limping. Now, he was injured prior to the game. Should mention this when he was running drills, and they attended to him down on the near sideline. Now carried it 16 times in this ballgame. And he has 75 yards to his credit. Smith gives to his fullback Rice. He fumbles the football. Indiana looks like they have it at the 45. Now, well, wait a minute. Now they're going to take a long look. Maybe that got away from a Hoosier and went back to a Wolverine. Get it back. Number 88, Craig Dunaway on the bottom of that pile. I don't know how he got it because Rice fumbled it forward. First and 10 at the 45 on the option. Smith fumbles the football, and this time Indiana does have it. He's another Cincinnati Molar product. On first down, the ball goes to the tailback, Minio, and he slams his way up to the 43-yard line. Second gun formation for Indiana in the backfield. And we've got a new quarterback in there and Cam Cameron. He fires it up to Minio at the 43, goes to the 40 down the near sideline where he is knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line. There's a fumble by Walsh. Ball is loose at the 35. And Indiana retains possession. Second down and 10, that ball was back to the line of scrimmage. Here is the wingback reverse to Gunn. He's going to throw the football. Arches one down into the end zone for Boyd, and it is incomplete. Boyd had both Hewlett and Burgai on him. If Gunn could have thrown that ball maybe another five yards, Boyd might have had it, but it was still a chicken fight down there for the football, and for a moment, it was anybody's football. The 13, he's got it, and he's down at the 10. Hit by Marion Body, but Indiana with their deepest thrust of the ball game. Back to action we go. Laufenberg gives it off on the delay to Minio, and he cracks his way down inside the eight yard line. Geargash on the stop. Came last year. They didn't think ever play a game. He came back. He's really their heart and soul. He goes in motion as the up back out of a deep eye, and they're going to Minio around that side. Cuts back in at the five, and he's stopped short of the three. Now we have Dwayne Gunn working as the short man out of that deep eye. He goes in motion to the right side. Walsh and Minio behind Laufenberg rolling left looking into the end zone. He is going to be hit and gets rid of the football and the crowd wanted a flag as he threw it over here on the right side. But there was an eligible receiver in the vicinity in Scott McNabb. But Indiana now faced with a fourth and goal at the Michigan three. Going to line up for three. Apparently he's going to he is three. going to line up for three I think. Smith had a 45 yarder among his three field goals last week against Syracuse. He's a walk on. Didn't even come out until after practice had got underway. This would be a 20-yarder. He's going to go through with it. Up it goes and through. 59 remaining third quarter to score. Michigan 17, Indiana 3. Here comes the kickoff by Fitzgerald, and this one sails down to Rogers at the 5, comes to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and he is hit from the side and belted out of bounds at the 21, 22-yard line by Jeff Gedman. Here's Michigan, first and 10, their own 22-yard line. The ball goes to Rogers from the tailback spot and a lot of room up the middle, and he's up over the 30 to the 31-yard line before brought down by Dennis Edwards. Short of a first down, second and short. This time it is... Dan Rice back in the ball game from the fullback spot, and he carries for a first down up to the 39-yard line. Smith has him up to the line of scrimmage. Only wide receiver is Vince Bean. He's off to the left. Out of the eye, the ball goes to the fullback. Rice hit at the line of scrimmage, but manages to squirm his way forward up to the 48-yard line. Caddis in motion to the right side as Smith gives it to Rogers, trying to sweep that side, and he is belted down. He had to go to the 49 for a first down. Let's see where they mark it. He's going to be in that vicinity, but whether he got there or not, I don't know. Well, Lee Corso came right out there to kind of help uh, the referee spot the football, but I guess he just didn't get to help him enough. Because we'll keep this drive alive, at least momentarily, for the Wolverines. The ball resting short of their own 49-yard line, and their 17th first down of the afternoon. 
Rick Rogers now 12 carries on the day for 66 yards. Now again just one wide receiver two tight ends on that line of scrimmage for Bo Schembechler has gone back to power football here this afternoon and it goes to Rice and he goes up the middle into Indiana territory at the 47 as they'll spot it inside the 48 and time continuing to tick away here and that will be the end of the third quarter with the score Michigan 17 Indiana 3 and we'll be back for fourth quarter action right after we let you listen to this. quarter on second and six Smith on the option gives it off to his up man Rice bangs his way down to the 44 43 yard line perhaps Here's Smith rolling back on second and long running to the near sideline and he is pulled out of bounds by Mark Smith back at the 36 well, Smith back to throw on third and long fires it up the middle for Dunaway he had it dropped Right through his hands at the 40 yard line. Football. Gets a good snap. Lifts a high, beautiful, booming kick. Way back to Wilbur at the six. Coming up to the 10, and he is staggered and dropped at the 11. 10 for the Hoosiers. Out of the shotgun. Laufenberg from the quarterback spot. Throws it over here to Minio at the 10, and he is dragged down on a one legged tackle by Burgai up at the 16 yard line. And Laufenberg fakes to one man, gives it to Minio, trying to follow some interference around the left side, but it is not there, and he is pushed down right at the line of scrimmage. From the shotgun, Laufenberg takes the snap. Back to go, fires it up the middle. It's caught at the third, 25, 30, 35 by Gunn. He's up to the 40-yard line, and for the first time this afternoon, Dwayne Gunn exhibits a little running ability of his own as Keith Bostick and Body had to make the stop up. Ball is put down. Sheik puts it up and through. Make it 45 straight. Time out of the field, 448 remaining here in this ball game. The score, Michigan 24, Indiana 10. Well, this is old-fashioned football. Ali Haji Sheik, who has not allowed a run back so far by the Hoosiers, will be preparing to boot this one in to the end zone if possible. He wobbles this one, but it's going to get into the end zone, but not that deep. But Bobby Howard says, I'm not going to run it back anyway. He's decided just to put it down and give Indiana the football at the 20. To think about it, Dwayne Gunn, rather emphatic, told him, no way. If you do it, I'm not going to block for you. So Michigan will go on defense now. Last time they watched the Hoosiers March for 88 yards and a touchdown in 14 plays. Here's Johnny Boyd. Indiana will have the shotgun. They have Dwayne Gunn flanked as the wide receiver to the right. And Laufenberg drifting back to throw. Michigan with a three man rush, not putting too much pressure on him, and it's incomplete. Intended over here to the tight end, Scott McNabb, at the 21 yard line. Set an Indiana record by completing 24 passes against Syracuse. Second and 10. Again, the shotgun in the backfield for the Hoosiers. Laufenberg to throw, far sideline. It is caught and then dropped. But uh, apparently he had it long enough. Chris Cook had the football, started to go upfield, lost possession of the ball, and went out of bounds at the 26, and the official said he did have possession for reception, and so Indiana will still be about four yards short of a first down. And Laufenberg, again from the straight snap, fires it over here to the tight end McNabb. He is hit and dropped by Body or Bostic at the 31-yard line, but it will be enough for a first down for the Hoosiers. Back into the eye formation. And Laufenberg on a play action pass fires the gun up here, and it is incomplete as Gunn was going for the football along with Marion Body. The ball just 
over their heads down at the 20. Here's Laufenberg again, play action, fires it up here. It is caught by Benson, who was on his knees at the 43-yard line of Indiana, and that's a first down. Stephen Benson, junior, 5'10", 167, out of Lauder Hill, Florida, has given the Hoosiers another first down. From the pro set, on the draw, it is given to Walsh. She spins away from one tackler at the 45 and is down inside the 40. Second and four. Under three minutes to go from the shotgun. Laufenberg drifting back to throw. Now rolling to the right side, looking downfield. Fires it, incomplete, and a flag is thrown. Jack Walsh, the intended receiver at the 38, over his head. Laufenberg awaits the snap from Weibel. He has it. Play action pass, stays in the pocket, throws it up to Minio at the 40, gets away from one man, but two others dump him at the 39-yard line. Fourth down and about a yard. The ball is given to the tailback Minio. He has a first down as he pushes his way down close to the 35-yard line. As they try to come out with a six-pointer here. Here's Laufenberg scrambling around. He's trying to get away from a Michigan tackler. Now waits, fires one up the field, and it is intercepted by Bostick at the 15 to the 20 to the 25 to the 30. To the 35 to 40. The 45 to 50. Laufenberg has a shot at him. Missed him. He's down the far sideline, but he is out of bounds back up here. He is out of bounds, although he went to the end zone. He stepped out of bounds back at about the 35 yard line. But Keith Bostic with a tremendous interception. It was a tremendous interception. season. Garrett is the fullback. Smith, the tailback. He gets the handoff from Hall and puts his head down and drives forward to the 33-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 35. Sim Nelson also playing a tight end at the other side. Out of the eye, Hall gives it to his up man Garrett. Big hole up the middle and he's down to the 24-yard line. That'll be a first down. Clay Miller coming in there now to strong side tackle position, replacing Rich Stringer. First time he's been off today. And Tom Garrity is going to come out at that other tackle also. Pitch back comes to Smith, and he drives his way down to the 20-yard line. Under call a timeout or anything here to try to rub any grease into the wound. They're just lucky to get out of here today. They realize they've had themselves a tussle, and there is the final gun and our score today. Michigan 24, Indiana 10. We'll be back in just a moment right after we pause for this message. This is the Michigan Football Network. Michigan Replay with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, its Pontiac Motor Division, and its General Motors Parts Division. By the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. I'm Jim Brandstatter, along with Michigan head football coach Bo Schembechler. And uh, the Big Ten season is two games old for the Wolverines, and Michigan is 2-0 in the conference, 2-2 two two overall, a 24-10 victory over Indiana. Got to feel good, the fact that you are unbeaten in the conference, and that, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the Rose Bowl's still there. Yeah. Well, anytime you win, Jim, you've got to be happy, and um, we're... Uh, uh, real pleased that we beat Indiana. Um, there are some things that we've got to continue to improve on, but taking everything into consideration, I thought it was a, it was a good victory for us. Talk about the conference for a second. The fact that you have beaten Indiana, you're two and uh, two. Confidence levels of the kids got to be coming up a little bit. Despite the fact they've lost two games, they still got something to look forward to. Well, uh, I think right now the conference race is wide open, Jim. They're there, there isn't a team that is uh, really dominant. 
um, and uh, anything can happen. So uh, I think all of the teams that have less than two losses have a chance to win it. All right, we'll be right back, and we'll take a look at a punishing ground attack that Michigan used to beat Indiana when we take a look at the highlights. After watching about the first 10 minutes of the Michigan-Indiana game uh, on Saturday, I got the feeling that you told the offensive line before the game, the game is yours, guys. Go after it. You only threw the ball 10 times, and we were back to old D and B football. <laughs> well, our strategy in this game was to run the ball, Jim. There isn't any question about that. Um, we decided uh, early in the week that we could run on Indiana, that that would be our uh, basis of attack, and that we wanted to improve our running uh, for future games because we hadn't been able to run well. And uh, we threw only 10 passes. The week before, we threw 37. <laughs> I would say next week it'll be somewhere between 37 and 10 <laughs> as to how many passes we throw. Were you um, pleased with the way you ran the ball? Because you ran well, the ball extremely well. Well, I think we ran the ball pretty well. Um, um, Rick's had a fine day running, but I, I thought the line uh, controlled the line of scrimmage fairly well. Uh, there, as you notice in here, they're playing us with a four-man front. And uh, when things got uh, bottled up inside and they tried to force us outside, we ran around it. But we uh, were a little bit inconsistent, particularly early here. And um, Ali Haji Sheik kicked the 50-yard uh, field goal to put us on the board uh, three to nothing. That was his career longest, and he just seems to be getting better. I think he is. I really do. Uh, Laufenberg, the fine quarterback of Indiana, did a pass here. And then they handed off to their tailback, Orlando Brown, for good yardage. And uh, they started to move on his side. Uh, Miscue in the backfield here on a handoff on a counter play uh, gave the ball back to us and uh, we're in possession again. Uh, this time uh, Steve goes back to pass and finds Dunaway over in the left flat. This was following a penalty and we were still a little bit short of a first down uh, at that time. Here we are at third and two and uh, Rick Rogers uh, in a tailback now uh, ran in there for a good game but you can see there pretty good holes in there to run through. This is a uh, bootleg play with Smith throwing the Dunaway again, and we're down to the 25 yard line. And most of your yardage came really between the tackles, so inside you really did get some blocking. Well, we, we decided we'd try to punish him inside and uh, did a pretty good job of it. This is a very unique play here. They came after us with a gap defense, and we missed the block, and the guy ran right up into the face of Steve, and the ball was tipped and ended up being intercepted. So uh, here we go again, uh, this is the off-tackle play again, and we ran the off-tackle play, I would say, probably 15, 20 times in this game. Third down, three, and we roll out, and Steve runs with the ball. And, but you understand that this defense playing the front that they do um, is vulnerable inside, and um, when they start to tighten up inside, then you can break it outside. So it's Rick Rogers again uh, on a good play. So when people call this dull and boring, maybe it is, but it's effective and it's what they're giving you. That's right. You got to take what they give you. This is one of the few option plays that we ran in this ball game, and Steve kept the ball, made a very fine run for a touchdown, and uh, this will put us ahead ten to nothing. He did make a great run, and I noticed on those two rollouts we've got, it looks like you're giving him more room to run, more opportunity. Well, we moved him in this game because of the defense. And, uh, here our defense uh, uh, got a sack, uh, went for Caraway and uh, Laufenberg. Uh, they had not used the shotgun in the last two ball games, and um, so this was uh, sort of new. Uh, for us, and uh, they did a pretty good job with it. You let at halftime 10 to nothing. Uh, you felt good about the way things were going? Well, I never feel good until you, you know, you're a little more ahead than that. 10. 10 is not quite enough. Uh, this was a typical example of Rick's breaking outside on the defense. And here our freshman fullback, uh, Danny Rice, breaking up the middle for a good gain, and um, Dan did a good job running the ball, except he forgot it one time. <laughs> Here's a pass with Smith uh, hitting Dunaway uh, on a drive that takes us down to the 21-yard line. And Rick's on a little handback counter, uh, goes in, he's hit very hard, but picks up good yardage. But there are creases there for him to run in. So the blocking has been pretty good. Third and 12, Smith rolls out, and a great block by Ricks, and decides to keep it, and rolls all the way down inside the two-yard line for a first down. And then uh, on the second play from down there, 
Bryce dives over for the touchdown. And you're at 17 nothing, and you let the fullback carry the ball more in this game than you have all season long. It was, it's really kind of amazing they carried it so much. Well, it is. Uh, you know, they're, they're freshmen, and uh, it takes a little while. Here's the disappointing thing: if you want to, we're up um, with a chance to put this team away, uh, 17 to nothing, and they fumble the ball, and we fail to do anything with it. And uh, this is the uh, the next possession. Um, our, our, we clamped the ball on the option play and fumbled it, and uh, there we were. So, still making some big mistakes. There are two big passes uh, for Indiana. This one uh, getting them deep into our territory. Um, those two plays were instrumental. We held for two downs, put pressure on him, uh, tried to throw here. I think a tight end screen that uh, didn't work, and they settled for a field goal to make it 17-3. 17-3, you're still in control. Uh, again, I know you don't feel safe, but it looked like you had it in control well, the whole way, and then you almost let right. him back well, in. Well, here's a third and six, six and they, I mean, they get the ball out to Dwayne Dunn, their great receiver, and um, we didn't get to the passer, and, and they bleed a little yardage with the full back, and, and you know, they're back in the game. 17-3 to three is not, uh, you know, you're not setting the world on fire. And mentally, they're back in the game, which I think is worse than, you know, being 10 points down. Only because we failed to put them out when we should have. Here we all, all uh, three of our defenders there want to make sure he doesn't run to the right. <laughs> and he ends up going, here's fourth down seven, their touchdown play. And <clears throat> you call it whatever you want. Uh, it's a bad play by us and a good play by Indiana. And perhaps a little bit of luck involved, but... Nevertheless, on fourth and seven, they, they had to do something, and they, they threw it up and got it. But to your credit, on the next possession, you yes, sir, really put possession. it away. Well, on the next possession, not only did we have to hold on to the ball, but we had to score if we could, and, and uh, we did just that. Uh, Steve doing a good job here, hitting uh, Steve Johnson over the middle on a key uh, pass reception. But most of it, we stayed right on the ground. This is a big fullback. Uh, on the trap play, getting some good yardage, and uh, we're on the move. Uh, then uh, Ricks on the play finds a crease and hits up the middle, and then we score the touchdown that uh, gives us a 24 to 10 victory. I want you to know in our highlights, we have seen uh, all four of the Michigan completions. I think you had we were four of 10. I think that's kind of good. Well, I think uh, if this show is going to continue, we've got to. <laughs> <laughs> Any pass completion I want in the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a last play of the game where Keith Bostic makes a great interception, and really that's the one that sealed it. Yeah, he's, uh, I thought he was going to go all the way. If we'd have done a better job of blocking the quarterback here so he could sprint out uh, on the fullback, I think he'd have gone all the way. But, uh, they called him out of bounds, but it was a great interception and, and closed the door on Indiana. So you went at 24 to 10, and back to our comment a minute ago. You said that uh, maybe we'll have to show all the <laughs> pass completions no, in I, the highlights. You mean you're going to not throw it anymore, and that dull and boring football is going to return sound to like Ann a Arbor? sports writer, the way to misinterpret <laughs> the way things are said. I just said that if we have any great pass plays, we'd like to see them in the highlights. Okay, well, we got all your completions in there. Four. <laughs> Well, we may have five next week, you can't tell. <laughs> okay. Seriously, talking about, you know, the Big Ten and the win over Indiana, where does it put you? Well, really, uh, I think the uh, tough part of the schedule is coming up. The key game, of course, is Michigan State. And we play that game and then go to Iowa and Northwestern. Uh, if we beat Michigan State, we'll be in the race. I think that's the key to it. You can talk about all these other games. I don't believe that uh, either Indiana or Wisconsin are the caliber of football team that Michigan State is. So that uh, makes this game um, the most important one on the schedule. Okay, we will be right back from top of the mountain and back down. A look at a fascinating assistant coach. Stay with us. As we told you earlier this season, there have been some changes on Bo's staff in 1982. Maybe the most interesting is Alex Agassi, a former head coach, coach of the year and athletic director. He looks at this job not as the downhill side of a great career, but as a new lease on life. And there's no question, 
He's 100% involved and back doing what he wants. I thoroughly love it. At this stage of my life, I couldn't be doing a more enjoyable job than I'm doing right now and being associated, number one, with Bo Schembechler, my longtime friend back from the early Northwestern days, who I admire, respect, and love so much, and also have an opportunity to be with a class university like the University of Michigan, and the bottom line, to be with kids again. I mean, to work with kids is the most enjoyable thing in the world, and I love it. But to understand Agassi, you've got to look at his career. A three-time All-American and the only player in history to be All-American at two universities, Purdue and Illinois, he was headed for a life in football. After six years of pro ball with Chicago, Cleveland, and Baltimore, he moved to Iowa State as an assistant. In 1956, he went to Northwestern as an assistant to Era Parsegian. When Era left for Notre Dame in 1963, Alex Agassi became Northwestern's head coach. He was the last coach in Evanston to have a winning season. In 1970 and 71, his Wildcats finished second in the Big Ten, and in 1970, he was named Coach of the Year. In 1973, he took over at Purdue, and his biggest win came in 1976, when the Boilermakers knocked off the number one-ranked Michigan Wolverines of Bo Schembechler, 16-14 in West Lafayette. But after that season, he was fired, and he took over the job as athletic director at Eastern Michigan. Last year, Agassiz resigned his post at Eastern and literally had no idea what he was going to do. But down the road in Ann Arbor, things were beginning to happen. At that time, there weren't any openings at the University of Michigan in any capacity because they had a full staff. When Coach McCartney got the Colorado jobs, some things started to happen, things opened up, and Bo and I were talking. He said, would you be interested? I said, absolutely. And so it developed from there and came from there, and I'll tell you, I, I just love it. I'm so happy, and uh, again, Bo is a key guy. I'll tell you, it's like uh, rebirth, reborn, rejuvenation. I haven't had so much fun in years. Uh, you know, people ask me, do you ever want to be a head coach again or athletic director? And my answer is very simply and quickly, absolutely not. I have been to the top of the mountain for 18 years, and I enjoyed it, and I loved it, and I had my day in the sun. Let that be for younger people have their opportunity. I love young kids. I'm 60 years old right now. I loved them when I was coaching when I was 32 when I first started, and I still do. I don't think anything has changed. It's a question of being able to relate, and I think I can do that. On the field, basically, I'm helping Elliot Uzlak with the offensive tackles and tight ends, specifically with the tight ends, wherever I can, whenever I can. I also have the demonstration team, and uh, we're uh, going to have quite an organization. We're going to have the best demo team in the entire United States of America. The kids have been told that. They know that, and they're going to believe that. In fact, we've got a name for that. Would you be interested in knowing what that name is? Absolutely. We have named ourselves the Fools. Now you're laughing, the fools. That is, means the fraternal order for the offensive look. <laughs> also, only I, only I also a head have, coach could come up with something like that for a demo. Well, it's an identity. It's something that, you know, I'll tell you, on the field the other day, I'm not up with all the new slangs with the young people. Bo had told the squad a little bit about my background. I said, friend, one of the linebackers on the demo team says to me, man, he says, you're a sick linebacker. And I thought he meant really sick, and I got halfway angry. He says, I found out sick meant good. So fools means good. As you can see, Alex Agassi is in love with the job and the kids he coaches. But after all his great moments and years in the game, he still missed something because he's always been the opponent. I've come into this ballpark at the U of M here many years as an opponent. And going down that tunnel is quite an experience. Now, you wouldn't understand and know that, Jim. And I want to tell you, frankly, it's quite awesome. When you go out to that field, there's 104,000. You know 103, 500 are against you. It's an awesome feeling it's going to be nice to go on the other side of the field. And I'm sure for you it's nice to have him on your side of the field. Well, uh, one of the great things about uh, coaching, there are two things, Jim. Uh, one is association with people like you, you know, having coached you and see you and, and friendships that you have, and the fellows that you coach with. Uh, Alex is one of my closest friends in, uh, in the coaching profession, and uh, the reason... Uh, that we're such close friends as I have tremendous admiration for him as a player and a coach. Uh, he is a man of extreme integrity, uh, great character. Uh, he has never, uh, that I can ever think of, done anything uh, unethical in the coaching profession. And uh, he's just quality through and through. So I, I felt that if he came to Michigan in some capacity and worked with our players, that they'd benefit uh, tremendously from having him around. And besides that, <clears throat> I know your penchant for 
sitting around the office with the guys smoking cigars, sure. and he is one of those guys. He's one he? of my favorites, that's right. Egg smokes cigars once in a while, and, and um, he's, uh, he can, you know, he's got a lot of stories, and it's fun. It really is fun. That's all part of coaching. I mean, most people think that, um, you know, you don't have that kind of camaraderie, but it's all nose to the grindstone. We spend 12, 14 hours a day in that office, Jim, as you know. And uh, you have to have people around you that you really like because when you're that closely <laughs> associated, you know, it can get a little tough. But, um, no, we're, we're tickled that. We're having a lot of fun with Alex. Great. We're going to have a lot of fun next week, too. That's what we'll talk about next, Michigan versus Michigan State, and we'll scout the Spartans. This is a Michigan State team with real talent at every position, even if they don't have a great deal of quality depth. In fact, I would say it could be as good as any during the 12 years I've been broadcasting Spartan games, with the exception of the conference championship team. But it's been brutalized by a very tough early season schedule. Quarterback John Leister leads the offense. The Great Falls Montana senior is not as consistent as he should be. But he does have a gun for an arm, and that makes him very tough to stop when he's right. John's favorite target is his close friend and former competitor at quarterback, Otis Grant. I would expect they'll talk about him in the National Football League next fall, too, because of his soft, sure hands and his great speed and size. He's 6'3 and 195 and tough to cover. The Spartans' best back is Aaron Roberts, the ex-high school All-America from Catholic Central in Detroit. He's a slashing-type runner who makes good use of the big state offensive line, which includes all Big Ten center Tom Piet. MSU's defensive line is quick and physical. Carl Banks is a good example. The 6'6", 235-pound junior was all-conference as a linebacker last fall, but he has been moved to drop-off end in a defense designed to make the Spartans tougher against the run. The spirit of the state defense may well be this young man from Monroe, Washington. 250-pound Smiley Cresswell plays as full tilt as full tilt can be. The real story in the Spartan defense, though, is senior linebacker Jim Neely. Just a sometime starter until now, he has been wherever he's had to be this fall, leading the team in tackles by such a margin that it isn't even close. Oh, and they have one more weapon, gentlemen. Solid punter Ralph Mojenko has taken over Morton Anderson's place-kicking duties. He is not Morton yet, but he's not bad, as this 62-yarder in the opener at Illinois will attest. It should be interesting at Ann Arbor. This is George Blaha reporting for Michigan Replay. The Michigan State Spartans are 0-4 on the year, but believe me, they are for real. And Bo, you say, on film, they may be the best you've seen this year. Well, you know, they played a murder schedule by um, uh, playing uh, Illinois and Ohio State early, and then uh, Notre Dame and Miami. Those are four awfully good teams. And uh, they played um, uh, a little tougher schedule than we played even. Uh, um, I, I don't think that um, any of those teams um, would be uh, uh, quite like uh, Wisconsin or in Indiana. So that means that uh, they've been up against tough competition, and they're a solid football team. What kinds of things do you have to do to beat them? Defensively, they're very strong. Well, I think, uh, first of all, we've got, to, we've got to figure out some ways to score. We've got to score the football. And um, despite the fact that in a couple of games their offense has not been real effective, uh, there's talent there. The quarterback's good. The receivers are outstanding. And uh, they've got good runners. Um, I, I see this as the best Michigan State team, as uh, they, the announcer said, um, since the, uh, when did they beat us, 78, something like that? With Gibson and, and, Gibson uh, and Steve that, Smith that, that, and Mark that, Of course, that was an outstanding team in, in every respect. But this is a good football team. Despite the fact that they're 0-4, it is Michigan versus Michigan State, so you can throw the record books and throw the records right out the window. So join us next week on Michigan Replay when we take a look at one of College football's great rivalries, Michigan versus Michigan State. Michigan Replay has been brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, its Pontiac Motor Division, and its General Motors Parts Division.
by the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser.